Thank you, Father God, for who you are. There is none like you, Lord. You're such an awesome God, and you have a plan for each one of us, and you're excited about each one of us, Lord. And God, help us to see, help us to see where you are with us, Lord, that we will worship you and you alone, that we will follow you and you alone, and work with and for you alone, Lord. Guide us through your spirit in such a lifestyle. In Jesus' name, so we pray. Amen. Amen. Great. Good works. Dead works with a key. Hear and obey. Hear and obey. A first point, even what you can write down there. Accept your assignment. Accept your assignment. Just tell your neighbor, accept your assignment. I want to say, my brother, my sister, you have no assignment, absolutely no assignment from God, no assignment from heaven at all, but only from hell, only from your flesh, only from your stress, only from your circumstances, you will receive an assignment unless, unless I understand what God has given me. Your stress, your circumstances, your success has an assignment for you. To go and do certain things. And you will yield to that. Not like you will choose to say. I will yield to the assignment that stress has for me. Where stress will say. This is how you will deal with the things tomorrow. The challenge says. This is what you will do tomorrow. Your circumstances. Your success. Could say. This worked yesterday for you. And we will build upon that. Did God say so? Or did you give your success a voice did you give your intimidation your circumstances a voice and that voice is, demands a certain assignment from you or will it be God and God alone and that you will hear his voice so that you understand the assignment that he has for you no assignment from heaven no assignment from God First of all, if I understand how to hear his voice, you need to understand that God believes in you. First point, you have it here. That God believes in you. My brother, my sister, yes, before we have our right performance about what we believe in God and how we believe in God, God believed in the masterpiece that he created. God believed in the workmanship. That what is coming, that came, what came from his hands, that he believes in that. Are you with me? God believes in you. Let's say, God believes in me. And God dreams about you. God believes in you. God dreams about you. And it wasn't a nightmare. That's where you were born, in the heart of the Father. As a dream in the heart of the Father. You can hear God. God is speaking to you. And God will speak to you, my brother, my sister, through creation, through circumstance, through brothers and sisters, through his word, mostly. But God is speaking to you and he wants to speak to you. It's not like God is silent. God wants to speak to you because he desires a relationship with you. There's appointments that God will have with you. Not just today, not just one day. Unfortunately for many, for many, it will only be in that day when it's too late. Where every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But tomorrow in your circumstances, will your knee bow to his final input? Will your tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord when you think about the hurts, disappointments, your success, your failures? In that situation, will you understand your appointment not with your failure, your appointment with God about the failure, the appointment with God about your success but your appointments will be not with that what is happening around you but God has certain appointments with you and in the word appointment we see a focus I have an appointment with you what am I saying I want your focus I want your attention and I will give you my attention and we We'll focus on one another and we're going to share something with one another. That is God having an appointment with you. God saying, I, I want your focus. And I'm going to focus on you. And I want you to hear what is in my heart. 
Amen. An appointment is waiting for you even tomorrow. Therefore, expect God. What is your expectation? Expect God. Expect that God's going to move. Why? You have an eternal mandate. You have an eternal destiny with him. Eternal destiny, eternal mandate. And what God has for you tomorrow is not, first of all, to change your circumstances, but that everything will work for the good, for the eternal mandate, eternal dream that God has for you, so that what you live tomorrow will have eternal value. It will not be in that day tested by fire as works, dead works. What's good ideas? But it had no eternal value. But what you pray tomorrow must stand even when you go to heaven. That prayer must be there for your children, for their children, for the nation. Hello? Like a cloud waiting for the right moment. May God help you to understand legacy with an eternal mandate and destiny that God has for you. And at the end of the day, my brother, my sister, God, there's this desire to make his home with you. God has this desire to make his home with you. You know, demons also need a home. They know their destiny for eternal damnation, eternal, eternal hell forever. But here they are looking for a home. Will they find a home in you? Will stress find a home in you? Will anxiety find a home in you? Will compromise find a home? Will a demon of religion find a home in you? They need a home. There's scripture that says, if a demon is chased out, he goes to many places and then he comes back to see and he finds the home empty, not full of the word, not full of God. Then he goes and fetch seven other demons worse than himself to come and live in that home. Your life, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. It's ordained to be a home here for the one with the assignment, the Holy Spirit, to live in you. God that is on assignment is living in you. Hello? And if you understand your assignment, you will work with him. You will work with him. You and Holy Spirit will work together. But if I don't understand my assignment, I will go my direction. And I expect God to bless me, but it's not going to happen. His grace will be there. His grace will be there. Like for 40 years, his provision was there in the desert. Even they rejected his plan. And God said, you will not walk into your eternal mandate and destiny for your life. But God's grace was still there. Cloud was there. The fire was there. The manna was there. The quails, everything was there. But that does not confirm to you that you are in God's perfect plan for your life. That's no confirmation that you are doing his perfect will and living in the dream that he has for you. It's just God's awesome grace that he's faithful to himself. He cannot change. If he said, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you, he will not do that. Are you with me? So when I understand this, my brother, my sister, yes, then I have a mandate. Then I have an assignment. And I can be on assignment. I want to say, God created you to be someone unique according to his will and plan. To be and also then to do. Let's say to be and to do. As we know this scripture very well, Ephesians 2 verse 10. For we are God's workmanship, workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Created to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Amen. I am the good work of God. Let's say that. I hear the good works from God. I do the good works with my God and for my God. So I must understand, I am this masterpiece. Now that is different translations. I am his workmanship. I am his masterpiece. I am his accomplishments. I am his handiwork. You are his accomplishment. He wants to brag about you. 
But he can brag about you. He can put you out there as his masterpiece if you understand how to live as his masterpiece. And that is what? By doing the works that he prepared for you to do. In that way, you're declaring you're a masterpiece from God and God himself. Amen. May God help you in understanding that. Let it be so in Jesus' name. This concept of working. If he created you to do, if he created you to work, there's a work that you do because of the curse on man. You must work to have food. But there's a work that is not because of a curse, because of the sin of Adam and Eve. And that work is... As I work as an honor unto the Lord in worship, I, through my work, I find an expression to love God through work expression, to worship God through my work as an expression of worship, an expression of love in this relationship. Work as, an, as a journey to understand how to be with God and how to do things with God. Like a father and a son that's going to do certain things together, but... But the doing is all about the togetherness. The doing is about the togetherness. And to do it not together, uh, the doing has no meaning. So in your work, it's to work for God as a priest in his presence. As a priest in his presence, you will do the good works God has prepared for you. You will do it for God. But also as a king, you will do it with God. With God, you do your work in the name of Jesus. And tomorrow in your work, in your business, in the name of Jesus, you stand as a king with a king of kings, with authority in the name of Jesus. You're doing it with God as a king forever. But as a priest, with a high priest, you do it for Jesus' name's sake. As a king in Jesus' name, as a priest, for your name's sake, Lord, I worship. I do this unto you. Whatever you do, do it as if unto the Lord. Amen. So your work, all as if unto the Lord, but in everything you do, do it with him. You cannot do it on your own. It's not possible. In Jesus' name and for Jesus' name's sake. With authority, you do it and in intimacy. Authority and intimacy. Uh, you're with me. So this concept of work can be such an amazing expression here on earth. Where you find your purpose in what you do. In the works God has prepared for you. You find your purpose in that sense where the work is only an expression in the relationship. So this good works that God has prepared for me is not so that you can have food. It's not to keep you busy, not to keep you out of trouble. Hello? But it's a privilege to work. Amen. I want you to just close your eyes and just hear this word from God. And just see yourself as a, as a child before God and God saying the following. Child, I am your father and I have made you excellent. I created you for my pleasure, not only to be the unique person whom I have called you to be, but also to do the good works that I have prepared for you to do. Accept your assignment, for you are my workmanship, created in my Son to do the good works that I have prepared for you, even before you were born. Yes, I have prepared for you to accomplish good works for every day of the rest of your life. If you accept my assignment for you on earth, I need you to ask me as your father what it is that I have prepared for you for every day to do. When a father would tell his son that he has prepared for him some work to do, Will not that son, if he respects his father, ask his father what work his father has prepared for him to do? He will, he will not 
He will not look at his father. Turn around and ask his father to help him with his own agenda. So much more, my child, as you have respect for me as your father, seek my face, wait on me, learn from me how to hear my voice, to hear and to know what the good works are that I have prepared for you to do every day. Accept your assignment, my child, and let us do this together. Amen. May God help you, my brother. May God help me. We find a scripture, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9 and 10. You can write that down. <clears throat> no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived. What God has prepared, everybody say prepared. prepared. For those who love him, but God has revealed it to us by his spirit. If we then go further with these good works that God has prepared for us in advance. What is God saying through the scripture? It's not going to be the obvious. What you see is not necessarily what God sees. No eye has seen. No ear has heard. What you hear is not necessarily what God is wanting you to hear about your future. No mind has conceived. No mind has accepted. Accepted. Make it his own as I take this as truth. That what God has prepared for us. Amazing destiny that God has for you tomorrow, next week, next year. But you cannot grasp it. You cannot see it. You cannot hear it. Except only through the Spirit of God. But God, but God has revealed it to us by His Spirit. By His Spirit. If I can acknowledge that I will not necessarily know God's will. I will not necessarily just know what is the good works that God has prepared for me. Then I agree with this verse. And if you have the guts to agree with this verse, you will understand. I cannot just go and do some things and say, God, please come and bless me. Please come and bless me. If you have respect for him, go and sit with him. Because your eye cannot see, your ear cannot hear, your heart, your mind cannot perceive, cannot receive what God has for you, except only through his Holy Spirit. And he reveals that only in the context of a relationship. God will reveal his plan. God will reveal that what the good works that he has prepared for you only to those who love him. Is that like a performance thing? No, not at all. It's all about relationship. He doesn't, he doesn't want any works from you here on earth if it's not in the context of a love relationship with him. But if you love him, you will obey his commandments. If you truly love him, you will sit with him. You will hear from the Spirit and he, God will reveal to you what he wants you to do. In this context of love, love love then there's no fear of performance fear of failure fear that they will be lack fear fear driven agendas why because it's driven by love perfect love drives out all fear amen are you still with me your eye will see your ear will hear your mind will conceive and will perceive and will accept what god has prepared for you if you Understand how to love him and how to hear from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Next point, partnership. Everybody say partnership. I need a partnership with God in doing the good works that he preordained for me to do. I can have 20 excuses why I cannot do it. And it could be very logical. But let's see. Romans 8, verse 28. We are assured and know that God, being a partner in their labor, that all things will work together. Everybody say, work together. And are fitting, fitting into a plan for good to those who love God and are 
called according to his design and purpose. For who? For those, once again, who love God. Oh, my brother, my sister, make this part of your, the foundation of your life. We're talking about a progressive word foundation. Don't be a fool. Don't be a foolish virgin, a foolish builder. By Let it come your way, but you put yourself in a lifestyle where you can hear the word, but you don't receive it. You don't receive it. There's people, they heard the word, but they didn't see what God is saying. You need to see what God is saying, not just hear. Amen. So being a partner in your labor, God's supposed to be a partner in your labor. And if God is a partner in your labor, why? Because you love him. You are in this passionate love relationship with him. He will come and he will partner in your work because it's about doing it together. And that is eternal life. In doing life together with your God. That is definition of eternal life. John 17, 3. Then all things will work together. Your circumstances will work for you. The failure of yesterday will work for you. What will it work in you? A dependency, an awesome appreciation for God's grace that God has forgiven you. Hello? And then that failure will work for you to bring in you a, a humility, a brokenness, a dependency. God, I need you. All things can work together for those who love God that tomorrow, today, is going to be driven by his love and not by performance. This time I'm going to do it right. Yesterday I, I, I failed. Today I'm going to try and do it right. No, he's not going to work. He's not going to work. But when you walk in that perfect love of God, driven by his love, then all things can work together. All circumstance will fit into a plan that is from God for your life. There will be no wasting of time. Are you still here? <laughs> so, so you will do it with God and for God. With God, you will go from strength to strength, strength to strength in the name of Jesus as a king with authority. For God, from glory to glory, more beauty in your intimacy. For God as a priest, more glory from glory to glory. In what you do, you just see more the beauty of God, more the beauty of God. Oh, God must help us to get such a lifestyle. Through his spirit, he's going to help us. Amen. For those who love God and are called according to his design and purpose. You are called according to his design. His exact design there's a specific design for your life specific you are called into that purpose and into that design but unfortunately circumstances are calling you also unfortunately failures and success especially success are calling you to find your identity in that success let me tell you who you are successes when you give success a voice instead of the voice of God in your success May God help you. May God help me. In Jesus' name. Amen. If we are partners with God, we need to see, okay, God, what are you, what, what are you doing? What is your, the works that you do? We see so many times, yes, in worship and in honor when we look in the Psalms, Stand amazed, stand amazed at his works. Worship him with a song. If don't please, don't sing a song. But let it be a melody, the melody, the joy in your heart. That through song, when you sing, it's an expression of joy, expression of beauty. That he will be, at the end of the day, the, the song in your heart. He has deleted my heart. He is your reason for singing. Amen. But may the melody be in harmony with heaven. In harmony with heaven. Amen. We see the scripture, you can go there, Isaiah 25. For you have worked wonders, plans formed long ago. 
with perfect faithfulness. Even God himself, himself, he has worked wonders, plans that he planned for himself, for himself to do long ago. God has planned to do certain things in certain time frames tomorrow, next week. Your God is planning to do certain things. This week in Bloemfontein. This week in that school where you are. This week in your business, through your business. He has planned certain things for himself that he wants to do. The question will be, will you partner with him? He wants to be a partner in your business, in your occupation, profession, whatever you want to call it. He wants to be the partner. But it's not just good works that he has prepared for you. He himself wants to do certain things. And what he asks you to do must fit into his plan. Must fit into that what is your dad's agenda for tomorrow. Your father God, your dad, your father God is going to work tomorrow. Are you going to work with your dad tomorrow? Are you going to work with your dad tomorrow? Through his son as an example and through his spirit in your life that will make it practical for you. Find it, find it from him. You are still with me? Oh, please. It's necessary for you to position your life in the right way. In the right way. I say don't allow the voices of your circumstances, success, challenges, failures, to guide you into their assignments of deception. Into their assignments of deception. There's demons, according to the word, there's demons assigned to your life to destroy, to destroy, to destroy whatever you have. That's the only thing they still can do before going to burn in hell forever. Assigned to your life to, to bring hell into your life. And you will fight the assignment from, of devils that's assigned to you. To manipulate circumstances. To manipulate you into the weaknesses of, that you are working through in your life. But you don't need to fight these demons that's assigned to your life. If you walk in the assignment that God has for you, the battle belongs to the Lord. If you can just walk into the assignment that God has for you. Joshua, just do what God has called you to do. Just walk around. Don't fight the Jerichoians or whatever you want to call them. Are you with me? But go and fight all those giants in Canaan, in the destiny that God has for you, because you don't know your assignment, how to walk it out with God, because you don't hear his voice, and you're not necessarily going to obey it, but obey him. The works that God has prepared for you is found with the works that God has prepared for himself. God worked amazing wonders in Egypt, amazing wonders in Canaan, Amazing wonders in the desert, wherever you are now. And if you understand how to work with him and to be there where he is working, you can have an amazing journey with amazing, amazing testimonies for the day of tomorrow. That based on the testimony, tomorrow become an opportunity. Amen. Assigned for these amazing opportunities, you. In Christ. God's masterpiece created in Christ Jesus. Not created in the circumstances. No, created in Christ. So then don't live as a product of circumstances. Don't live as a product of the hurt of the past. Or how people disappointed you. How people hurt you. Don't live as a product. Because if you feel, I, must, I am the product. I am the workmanship of that hurt. That hurt has formed me. That bitterness formed you. That fear is forming you. Or no. I'm a masterpiece from God. And God is forming me into what he created in his heart. In my heart is the excellent DNA. If I can say like that. As a masterpiece. 
as a masterpiece in the hand of God. But this masterpiece in here, what I, when I look at my life, I look at my soul, I look at sometimes things that I would do, I see sometimes a mess, not a masterpiece. Hello? But you to become that masterpiece. Live, live from your spirit where everything is perfect. Amen. Okay, you are still here. Last scripture for this part. Isaiah 6 verse 8. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Isaiah, then I said, here I am, send me. My brother, my sister, your assignment, you are saying, here I am, send me. But it happened in the Trinity when God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, when they looked at one another, Genesis 1, they said, let us make man. And then we messed up what he made. And then, first of all, they looked at one another. In our, in, through the prophet Isaiah, we see and say, who will go for us? And you know, I know in that context, it was Isaiah that answered. He heard. He saw in the spirit. But you know who answered first? Like they said, let us make man. So they looked at one another. Said, who will go for us? And they assigned Jesus to clean up the mess. What we created. Who will go for us? Father, I will go. And in humility, I lay down everything. And God said to himself, my heart will be bruised. My heart will be crucified. We will take all the mess that they've created. And so Christ came on assignment to earth. And you find your assignment only in him and through him. Because he was on assignment from the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. If you want an assignment from heaven, from God, you do it with Christ. You do it in Christ. You do it for Christ. But he must be in the center. Because otherwise, circumstances or that temptations in your lives, those fears will tell you, who will go for us? Who will go to deal with this anxiety that I must just do this, this job and, and, and start with that business and deal in this way with my finances? But you're an assignment sent out by your fears, by your stress, by your anxiety and all these other stuff. Your success telling you tomorrow this is what you will do. You're on assignment from God. Look at Jesus Christ. And he said in John 17, As the Father has sent me, as God, my Father, has sent me on assignment to do the certain works, so I send you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. What an awesome, awesome privilege, my brother, my sister, you have. I have. That God trusts us in such a way that he believes that through you and with you, he will bring his dream into reality. Thank you, God, for your awesome blessing. The ultimate blessing to walk with you, to work with you, to live for you. God, I pray that you will purify our hearts. That you set us free from the curse of working. Working because of sin. Working so that there will be provision. But God, we will work with provision. Jesus Christ. The one that is more than enough. Teach us, Lord, how to have such a lifestyle. Forgive us. Where so many times work became the security. Work became the identity. God, forgive us in that, but help us to understand how work can be an expression of a worship lifestyle, an expression to declare your authority in Jesus' name, but also as an expression for Jesus' name's sake.
to declare our love for you in a lifestyle of quality with true meaning. We pray that in Jesus' name and all say, Amen, Amen.